if someone wanted to lose weight quickly, safely, drastically, what would they severely eliminate? The carbs. Someone wanted to conquer cancer, what would they quite drastically drop? The carbs. Someone wanted to conquer their diabetes, what would they drop? The carbs. Carbohydrates are not bad. Got that? They're not bad. It's only when they're overdone and refined. And you, can you see what most people are doing today? It's overdone. And in a lot of cases, it's refined. But I have even found people to overdo the unrefined. What a relief. My husband would never forgive me if there were no potatoes at the main meal. We love the carbs. They're only a problem if they're overdone and refined. So considering the three essential food groups and considering the non-essential food group, if someone wanted to lose weight quickly, what would they drastically drop? The carbs. If someone wanted to conquer diabetes quickly, what would they drastically drop? The carbs. The carbs. And very safely too. I've seen it happen hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. And it's not forever. Once you've conquered your diabetes, you can start to slip in a little bit more carbs. Once you've conquered your weight, you can start to slip in a little bit more carbs. I eat a very low carbohydrate diet. I'm not overweight. I don't, I'm not a diabetic. I just love it because I have so much energy. You might think you're eating healthy, but what if I told you that nearly 80% of so-called healthy eaters are still making serious diet mistakes? Mistakes that could be silently damaging your body. Today, renowned health expert Barbara O'Neill is revealing the seven common dietary habits that could be fueling disease, accelerating your body's aging process, and draining your energy without you even realizing it. These hidden threats could be behind your digestive problems, constant fatigue, and weakened immunity. Don't wait until it's too late. Learn how to avoid these critical mistakes and start taking control of your health today. Barbara O'Neill stresses that many common foods contain harmful elements that people often overlook. These deadly foods can silently damage the body, disrupting its natural functions and increasing the risk of various health issues. O'Neill points out that refined sugar is one of the most dangerous substances regularly consumed, as it weakens the immune system, causes inflammation, and creates an acidic environment in the body that favors the growth of harmful bacteria and diseases. She also explains how sugar consumption leads to insulin spikes, which disrupt blood sugar regulation and contribute to insulin resistance over time, eventually leading to type 2 diabetes. She further emphasizes the harmful impact of processed foods, which are typically loaded with additives, preservatives, and artificial ingredients. These substances are not only nutritionally void, but also toxic, which can accumulate in the body and burden the liver. O'Neill highlights that refined flours, found in many processed foods, have been stripped of their natural nutrients, offering empty calories that spike blood sugar levels similarly to sugar, contributing to weight gain and other metabolic disorders. Additionally, trans fats and hydrogenated oils present in many processed snacks and baked goods are identified as major culprits in raising bad cholesterol levels, increasing the risk of heart disease and inflammation throughout the body. O'Neill advises against consuming dairy products, noting that pasteurization destroys many beneficial enzymes and nutrients while altering the protein structure, making it difficult for the body to digest. She explains that dairy can contribute to inflammation, mucus production, and digestive problems in many individuals. Moreover, she points out that some studies link dairy consumption to hormone imbalances, given that commercial dairy products often contain added hormones that can disrupt the body's natural hormonal functions. Artificial sweeteners, frequently marketed as healthier alternatives to sugar, are also highlighted as problematic. O'Neill explains that these sweeteners can confuse the body's metabolism, leading to increased cravings for sugary foods and disrupting the balance of gut flora. She notes that some artificial sweeteners have been associated with neurological effects, including headaches and dizziness, due to their synthetic chemical composition. In addition, O'Neill underscores the risks associated with consuming conventionally grown produce, which is often treated with pesticides and herbicides. These chemicals, she explains, can act as endocrine disruptors, interfering with hormonal regulation 
and increasing the risk of health problems like infertility and certain cancers. She advises choosing organic produce to reduce exposure to these harmful substances. Lastly, she mentions the dangers of consuming processed meats, which are often preserved with nitrates and nitrites. These chemicals have been linked to increased cancer risk, particularly colorectal cancer. Most people nowadays prefer various kinds of diet to maintain weight, but sustainable weight loss is not about quick fixes, fad diets, or drastic calorie restrictions. She argues that such approaches often cause more harm than good, leading to muscle loss, nutritional deficiencies, and a slowed metabolism. According to O'Neill, the body's metabolism naturally adjusts to low-calorie diets by decreasing energy expenditure, which makes it harder to lose weight in the long run. Once normal eating resumes, weight gain tends to be rapid, often resulting in regaining more weight than was initially lost. This dieting cycle can harm metabolic health and create negative psychological effects. O'Neill debunks the myth that skipping meals aids weight loss, pointing out that the body's response to fasting or skipping meals is to conserve energy by slowing down metabolism. She explains that when people regularly skip meals, their blood sugar levels can drop too low, leading to intense hunger, overeating later, and poor food choices. Sustained weight loss requires stabilizing blood sugar levels through regular, balanced meals that include complex carbohydrates, lean proteins, and healthy fats. This approach helps maintain consistent energy levels and reduces cravings for sugary or processed foods that contribute to weight gain. The focus, she says, should be on nutrient density rather than calorie counting. Diets that emphasize calorie restriction but lack essential nutrients can compromise overall health and decrease the body's ability to burn fat effectively. O'Neill stresses that nutrient-rich foods such as vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and quality protein sources support metabolic functions and help detoxify the body. This, in turn, aids natural weight regulation. She highlights the role of fiber, which is often missing in low-calorie diets, in promoting satiety and healthy digestion. Fiber not only helps to prevent overeating by keeping one full longer, but also supports the elimination of toxins from the digestive tract. Another misconception O'Neill addresses is the belief that all fat is harmful. She explains that the body needs healthy fats from sources like avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil for hormone production, brain function, and the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Eliminating fats entirely from the diet can disrupt these essential processes, which can hinder weight loss efforts. She also notes that healthy fats can actually promote fat burning by stabilizing insulin levels, unlike processed fats found in junk food, which tend to encourage fat storage. Physical activity plays a crucial role in sustainable weight loss, but O'Neill warns against relying solely on exercise without dietary changes. While exercise boosts metabolism and burns calories, its benefits are significantly diminished if dietary habits are not aligned with weight loss goals. She recommends a combination of resistance training and aerobic exercises to build muscle which helps increase resting metabolic rate. This enables the body to burn more calories even at rest, aiding sustainable weight management. O'Neill also emphasizes the importance of addressing stress and sleep quality in weight loss. Stress leads to elevated cortisol levels, which can cause weight gain, particularly around the abdomen. You're not fat. Your gut is just bloated. And your cortisol levels are probably pretty high. So not only is it making you bloat, but it's also giving you a puffy face and giving you acne. Tired all day, even though you're sleeping a lot and taking naps. Here's how you're gonna get your cortisol levels down. So whenever I feel anxious, I just take one of these Rosabella Moringa capsules and I feel so much better afterwards. And the best part is it's sugar-free, vegan, GMO-free and gluten-free. I don't have to worry about the ingredients. So it has vitamin C, folic acid, vitamin D and so many other essential vitamins and minerals that are known to lower cortisol levels. And it's flavorless and easy to swallow. There's no reason that you should be suffering like this. So if you want to try it for yourself. Poor sleep disrupts hormone balance, affecting hunger and satiety signals, often leading to overeating. But you should keep fats in the diet in check as well. Otherwise, you might fall prey to a shocking fat mistake that could be having a detrimental impact on health. According to O'Neill, Many people don't know the important differences between healthy and unhealthy fats. They often eat unhealthy fats without realizing how bad they are for their bodies. 
Not all fats affect the body the same way. It really depends on the type of fat you consume. The problem comes from using processed and hydrogenated fats, which are chemically changed to make them last longer and improve their texture. These include margarine and some cooking oils. Hydrogenation turns liquid oils into solid fats by adding hydrogen. This process creates trans fats, which can cause inflammation, increase the risk of heart disease, and lead to other health issues. But where the negotiations would change the most would be health status. So if someone wanted to lose weight quickly, what would they drastically drop? Carbs. And with, with no detrimental effect to the body. Last year on Catalyst, there was a documentary called Fat or Fiction. And there were professors on there just blowing this theory that fat is bad. It's actually essential. And one professor of nutrition, he said, you can actually live very well without any carbohydrates. But again, we don't suggest you do, but maybe initially to lose weight, you'll stop them all. O'Neill explains that eating these altered fats disrupts how cells work because they change the structure of cell membranes. This makes it harder for the body to absorb important nutrients and get rid of waste. Many vegetable oils like canola, soybean, and corn oil are often heavily processed. This processing removes their natural benefits and makes them more likely to become damaged, oxidized, when you eat them. This oxidative stress can harm cells and affect your overall health, possibly leading to diseases like heart problems or brain disorders. Even though these oils are marketed as heart healthy, their effects can be harmful due to the production of free radicals, which can damage tissues and organs over time. O'Neill stresses that natural fats from whole foods, like avocados, nuts, seeds, and cold-pressed oils, such as olive and coconut oil, are better for your health. These fats provide essential fatty acids that your body needs. They help keep cell membranes healthy, support hormone production, and aid in absorbing vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids found in these foods are important for reducing inflammation and supporting brain health, unlike the bad effects of processed fats. She also advises avoiding refined fats that have been bleached or deodorized since these processes harm the quality of the oil and remove natural nutrients. Additionally, she warns against cooking with oils that have low smoke points, like flaxseed oil, at high temperatures because this can create harmful substances. Instead, she suggests using stable fats like butter or ghee, which keep their health benefits even when heated. In addition to them, proper hydration and salt intake are fundamental to maintaining good health. She argues that many individuals are unaware of the impact that hydration mistakes can have on their bodies, leading to potentially serious health consequences. According to O'Neill, a common problem is insufficient water consumption, which can lead to dehydration. When the body lacks sufficient water, it can affect various systems, including digestion, circulation, and temperature regulation. Moisture. And because magnesium is a water-hungry molecule, it can be used to help the water get into the cell. So when you take a crystal of Celtic salt, put it on your tongue, and some say, how big's a crystal? Well, if you've got high blood pressure, start small, about the size of a sesame seed. I don't have high blood pressure, so I might have about three times little sesame seeds. Put it on your tongue, your mucous membranes start absorbing the minerals, the magnesium is taken to the cell membrane and you drink your water and that magnesium pulls that water inside the cell. It's the quickest way to hydrate a body. The only time excess water drinking can be dangerous is if people drink too much at once and don't have the minerals that are in the Celtic salt to pull that water inside the cell. Dehydration can cause symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and dry skin. But long-term dehydration may result in more severe issues like kidney damage, constipation, and impaired cognitive function. O'Neill explains that not all water is equal when it comes to hydration. She advises against consuming heavily processed or chemically treated water, which may contain impurities or lack the minerals necessary for optimal health. Water that is free from contaminants and contains natural minerals supports the body's hydration needs more effectively. When the quality of the water is compromised, 
it can fail to hydrate the cells properly, and the body may struggle to maintain fluid balance. This could force the kidneys to work harder to filter the water, adding stress to these vital organs over time. She also highlights that salt is often misunderstood in the context of hydration. Many people consume refined table salt, which has been stripped of essential trace minerals and may contain additives. O'Neill recommends using natural, unrefined salts like Himalayan or Celtic sea salt, which retain their natural mineral content. These unprocessed salts contain a variety of trace minerals that are beneficial for the body's electrolyte balance. The body's cells rely on this balance to facilitate electrical signals for muscle function, nerve transmission, and fluid regulation. Without sufficient mineral-rich salt, the electrolyte balance can be disrupted, potentially leading to muscle cramps, weakness, and irregular heartbeat. Additionally, O'Neill points out the importance of understanding the relationship between water and salt intake. Consuming excessive water without sufficient salt can dilute the body's electrolytes, resulting in a condition known as hyponatremia, where sodium levels in the blood drop dangerously low. This can cause symptoms ranging from nausea and confusion to seizures and even death. O'Neill suggests drinking water at least 30 minutes before, or one to two hours after meals, to avoid interfering with the digestive process. And remember, what you eat has a strong connection to fungal infections. According to O'Neill, the food choices people make can either encourage or inhibit fungal growth within the body, making diet a fundamental factor in managing such conditions. She explains that fungi thrive in acidic environments, which are often created by the consumption of certain foods. For instance, a diet high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, and processed foods can significantly contribute to an acidic internal state. These foods provide an ideal environment for fungi like candida to multiply, leading to infections or worsening existing fungal conditions. O'Neill states that even natural sugars, such as those found in fruits, should be moderated during the treatment of fungal issues, as they can still feed the fungus. She explains that some people may not be aware that their dietary habits are fueling fungal overgrowth, and by not changing their diet, they continue to struggle with recurring infections. Foods like bread, pasta, and other carbohydrate-rich items break down into simple sugars during digestion, which in turn provide nourishment for fungal cells. Dairy products, especially those high in lactose, can also contribute to fungal growth since lactose is a sugar. O'Neill emphasizes that ignoring these dietary factors can lead to a persistent cycle of fungal overgrowth, as treatments may only offer temporary relief if the underlying dietary causes are not addressed. Moreover, O'Neill discusses how certain foods can directly suppress the immune system making the body less capable of fighting off fungal infections. She mentions that alcohol is one such substance, as it can disrupt the body's pH balance, weaken the liver's ability to detoxify, and further promote an acidic internal environment conducive to fungal growth. Similarly, foods high in unhealthy fats, such as deep-fried items and processed oils, can cause inflammation, which may compromise the body's natural defenses against fungi. O'Neill argues that reducing these types of foods can significantly support the body's effort to restore balance and eliminate fungal infections. In contrast, O'Neill suggests that a diet focused on whole, unprocessed foods with antifungal properties can help inhibit fungal growth. She highlights the role of foods like garlic, coconut oil, and herbs known for their natural antifungal qualities. Overall, a balanced diet that includes all essential food groups is very important. According to O'Neill, these food groups provide crucial nutrients necessary for the body's proper functioning. Removing fruits from the diet could deprive the body of important vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that support immune function, reduce inflammation, and protect against chronic diseases. Fruits are particularly rich in vitamin C, potassium, and dietary fiber, which play roles in collagen formation, electrolyte balance, and digestive health. Without these, the body's ability to repair tissues, maintain a healthy gut, and regulate blood pressure may suffer. Carbohydrates, another essential food group, are the body's primary energy source, especially for the brain and muscles. O'Neill notes that while refined carbs should be limited due to their impact on blood sugar, complex carbohydrates from whole grains, legumes, and vegetables offer sustained energy, fiber, and essential nutrients like B vitamins and magnesium. 
These nutrients are vital for metabolic processes, nerve function, and muscle relaxation. Excluding all carbohydrates could lead to a state where the body begins to break down muscle tissue for energy, as it struggles to maintain blood glucose levels through gluconeogenesis, a process that can strain the liver and kidneys. Such a diet might also impair cognitive function since glucose is the brain's preferred fuel. O'Neill also explains that restrictive diets lacking in diverse food sources can cause micronutrient deficiencies. For example, a diet completely free of grains may lack sufficient amounts of certain B vitamins, such as folate, essential for DNA synthesis, and cellular repair. Additionally, diets that exclude carbohydrates and fruits can lead to insufficient fiber intake, which is important for maintaining a healthy gut microbiome. The lack of dietary fiber could negatively affect digestion, resulting in constipation and a higher risk of developing conditions like diverticulitis. Dietary diversity helps ensure a broader range of nutrients, and its absence might compromise the body's ability to perform optimally. She highlights that eliminating entire food groups not only impacts physical health, but can also influence mental well-being. The absence of sufficient carbohydrate intake, for instance, can lower serotonin levels, potentially leading to mood imbalances and fatigue. Carbohydrate restriction may also disrupt sleep patterns, as it affects the body's production of melatonin, a hormone that regulates the sleep-wake cycle. Finally, Barbara O'Neill warns people to be careful about jumping on food trends without doing proper research. Many individuals unintentionally harm their health by following popular diets without understanding their effects. O'Neill explains that many food trends are driven by marketing rather than solid science. People often get excited about these trends due to celebrity endorsements or social media buzz not realizing the long-term impact of certain foods on their health. For example, some trendy diets encourage eating a lot of foods called superfoods, or detoxifying items, which can cause nutrient imbalances and health issues if followed without a good understanding of nutrition. She highlights that many food trends focus on cutting out entire food groups or sticking to extreme diets, like keto or low-carb, which may not be suitable for everyone, especially those with health issues. While some people might see short-term benefits from restrictive diets, O'Neill warns that they can lead to nutrient deficiencies if followed for too long. The body has complex nutritional needs that fad diets often do not meet because they lack a balanced intake of essential nutrients like vitamins, minerals, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Instead, O'Neill encourages people to learn about the nutritional value of foods and to prioritize whole foods that offer a range of nutrients. She also points out the risks of trendy health foods that may not be as good for you as they appear. Many products that are labeled gluten-free, sugar-free, or fat-free are often highly processed and may contain artificial additives, preservatives, or unhealthy replacements like synthetic sweeteners and hydrogenated oils. These ingredients can upset digestion, change gut health, and cause inflammation in the body. O'Neill believes it's important to carefully read food labels and be aware of the hidden risks that processed health foods might carry, even if they seem healthy. She questions the scientific proof behind the frequent claims about trendy foods, like exotic berries or detox drinks. While these foods might have some nutritional benefits, their exaggerated claims often lack strong clinical evidence. She recommends eating a variety of fresh, locally sourced fruits and vegetables instead of exotic foods with unclear benefits. O'Neill thinks that sticking to seasonal produce and traditional nutrient-rich foods is better for long-term health. The emphasis should be on the quality and natural origin of food, rather than just following the latest diet trends. So, which of these diet mistakes surprised you the most? Are there any changes you're planning to make? Let us know in the comments. And most important thing, believe it or not, the deadliest things that are actually killing you always stay in your kitchen in plain sight because they are so common and you are habituated to use them, you don't realize they are the main culprits. Want to know how they are damaging you? Click on this video and watch. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, share it with someone who needs to hear this, and subscribe for more health tips from Barbara O'Neill. See you soon.